Welcome to the Faithful Fathering Podcast. Again, this is Rick Wirtz, founder and president of Faithful Fathering. It's a blessing to be with you. We work to encourage and equip dads by reinvigorating the church on the fathering front. And uh, so we're here to uh, encourage and equip you this Father's Day month, my favorite month of the year, June. And uh, we're not just going to recognize it as a day. It's a hallmark holiday, but it's really a charge to all of us dads to step up as the dad we're called to be and the dad that the next generation certainly needs Mm. to see. So we're going to charge you to engage that godly generation by starting a fathering movement in your home, Mm. in your church, and in your surrounding community. So uh, we'd like to introduce a dear friend, uh, Otto, uh, I'm sorry. (laughs) It's all right, man. I would like to start off by introducing a dear friend, Otto Kelly, that uh, he's pastor and founder of Daddy Academy, and uh, so uh, Otto, again, thank you for being thank a part you. of this. Uh, thank you for allowing me, man. This is a pleasure. Thank you. Well, we're on this Father's Day month two, as I call it, because every week uh, we want to reiterate the fact that dads, uh, this is our month. Yeah. We have to step into this yeah. role. We're not uh, yeah. we're not checking out on cruise control as we talked about last mm-hmm. session, but we're uh, revisiting what it means to be a dad and. As you know, a lot of times we either father as we were fathered, yeah. or we bust our tail to try to go the opposite direction, yeah. Yeah. neither of which may be healthy unless we really calibrate it to the Word of God, yeah. to our Heavenly Father. Right. So I always like to reference uh, and challenge dads during this Father's Day month to take on a study from our website, and this one is would be the, the Dad's Armor Study. Mm-hmm. And you can find it on the Four Dads page at faithfulfathering.org, hit the Four Dads button. And uh, the first thing we hit in that study is to talk to dads about their heritage, kind of rate, you know, what was their, what, what influenced their fathering? What's the heritage that they're trying to carry on? And, you know, uh, if your dad's an a-, a great athlete and you're an athlete, uh, it's wonderful. Right. If he's a good businessman and you're a successful businessman, let's go. Right. But if your dad was an alky mm. or a druggie or mm-hmm. a womanizer, yeah. It may not be something that, uh, but everybody always says, hey, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, yeah, right? Yeah. And so you're burdened with this and you're carrying this into a marriage or into a family and, mm. and trying to overcome right. a lot of times as a dad. Right. Uh, how, how, tell us a little bit about your heritage and, uh, and how you've navigated through that as a husband and father you are today. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, originally, uh, originally from Detroit, but uh, we lived most of our life in the uh, Nevada, Las Vegas, Reno area. And that's primarily where I grew up. But um, it's interesting because my dad died when I was in middle school. And uh, that did leave me groping. But what I did see from my dad, what I did uh, witness from him was this unwavering commitment to his family, this unwavering commitment of protection mm-hmm. and providing. So he do what he had to do. And, and uh, so I really, really uh, uh, caught that early, the importance of hard work, uh, the importance of being consistent, the importance of doing what you say you're going to do. Um, uh, I remember one time, I, I forget what I did, I lied about something, and uh, he really got in my grill, really got in my face and said, man, you know, whatever you do, you don't be lying. I don't care. You know, if you, if you mm-hmm. take a beat and take a beat, but don't lie. And so from that on, I was like, okay, I got that. And so those were certain things that, uh, that just really stuck. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, he was an a entertainer, but at the same time, uh, he couldn't fulfill his dream as a as an entertainer, so he went to work. And, uh, and then watching that and seeing that, uh, that was a, just a huge, huge example mm. of the important, a, a huge important example to me. So um, I, I think those are the things I caught from him. Mm. Uh, the willingness to, uh, to not uh, put your dreams on the shelf, but go for it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, mm-hmm. And uh, if, you, if you fall on your face, get up. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's not the end of the world. You know, mm-hmm. um, if you're bleeding, just sit it up and keep moving. You'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think that, that, that really helped me. I like what you say, you know, you caught that from your dad, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's, that's the message to dads, isn't it? Kids mm-hmm. are going to catch what we it's have. The challenge it. is, is what we have worth catching yeah. and what we it's want our kids one. to catch, yeah. right? right? How did you build on his example of, uh, you know, obviously you had to be a truth teller. That wasn't an option. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Meetings will continue until. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's. I, I was I was fortunate, uh, you know, growing up, I had a had a, a few uh, role models in my life, some some coaches that kind of grabbed hold of me, and then, you know, a few men in in, in church uh, that just kind of like dove into me and just told me the truth and just told me the real. Uh, and what I loved about them, they really didn't emphasize the, my mistakes, which is what I love. They really emphasized that your behavior is not 
uh, it's not lining up with, with, with who you really are. Mm. And so they spoke the truth over me as opposed mm -hmm. to like, man, you messed up, you did this. No, they just, no, this is who you really are. Mm. You, you may have temporary kind of like sidetracked, but this is who you really are. Mm -hmm. um, and, and hearing that pronunciation from authority figures in my life, speaking, and even as Paul says, you know, comforting, urging, mm -hmm. and encouraging, uh, they did that. Mm -hmm. And so there was a, there was a, um, a wonderful foundation mm -hmm. that was established as a result of these guys speaking into my life like that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, gosh, man, that, that, that has really helped me a great deal. That hadn't been perfect. I've made all kinds of messed up mistakes. But You, you, you know. remind me of a, a comment Sherman Smith made one time that uh, he said that he was uh, – uh, he thought he was Christian, and and uh, and fi Deke, uh, trying to think who the other football player was, but he came up to him and says, "Hey, would you stop saying you're a Christian if you're going to act like you're going to be acting?" Mm. <laughs> and you know that was so. It was, it was a brother that. came alongside <laughs> and said, "Wake up!" Told you know, him, and, yep, tell the uh, truth. Uh, so that that's a, that's a big deal. But on the whole, the fact that uh, that Pride Month has in encroached on our Father's Day month kind of says that dads aren't stepping up necessarily, huh? Yeah. It's, it's on our shoulders, is it not, uh, yeah. how kids live into relationships and healthy relationships? Mm, well, you know, uh, we, can, we can take an example from uh, Genesis when, um, when uh, Adam decided to be apathetic. Mm -hmm. He just didn't, didn't say anything. He was, he, he was right there. Uh, he heard the conversation. We didn't say anything. And usually uh, the enemy will fill in the void of silence. Mm -hmm. If men don't step up and talk and uh, are there to protect, to guard, and to guide, and to govern, govern, then uh, the enemy will take that void. Mm -hmm. And so what we're seeing you know, in our culture is a direct result of the silence of men. It's mm -hmm. exactly what we're seeing, the silence of fathers. Mm. Um, um, you know, I know that, you know, for example, you know, the, the schools have our kids you know, seven, eight hours a day. Uh, the, the, but the potency of what a father has to say within the short time that we have with our kids can change. Mm. It, can, it can give them the, what they need once they face those things out there. Mm -hmm. I really yeah, I do believe you, that. Yeah, I think yeah, you're right. Genesis 3 is where Adam's he's right beside her when she's being tempted. And uh, he was the one who had been given the instructions. Come on, man. Right? So, yeah. uh, if he, you know, apathetic, uh, passive, yeah. you know, these are the things yeah. that the men have to deal with. And, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the whole idea that uh, we, we fall short in exemplifying what the healthy relationship looks like mm -hmm. in marriage uh, opens the door for all kinds yeah. of, uh, uh, of intrusion, if you will, or invasion. Uh, I think if Robert Lewis had always defined a man as a reject passivity, accept responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. lead courageously, yeah. and invest eternally. Right. Uh, those are kind of the, the, the four points that he all, uh, always uh, f focused on. But uh, the, the shortfalls in, uh, I mean, I, I grew up in a, in, in a, uh, a but father figures in my life as well and, and different perspectives on what relationship would mm -hmm. even look like. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I feel like uh, today it, you know, it's like everything uh, sexual has been abdicated to the, uh, mm -hmm. to the schools, mm -hmm. everything spiritual has been abdicated to the churches. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what would your uh, encouragement be to dads to say, you know, hey, uh, you know, don't let go of this. Yeah. This, is, this is there to complement what happens in the home, not supplement, right? right. I, you know, as mentioned before, I had a, the, the pleasure of, of being with juvenile services, like I said, for about 11 years. But it, it's amazing to me uh, how uh, our, 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 our young ones are desiring, you know, information from uh, father figures. Mm -hmm. They're desiring it. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not, you know, um, uh, as I did this curriculum, I, I did research with a lot of ladies, young ladies, both in crisis pregnancy center and ladies who had been caught up in, in sex trafficking. And it was four things that they said that they desperately, desperately needed from a father figure at, at particular times of their life. And that was provision, it was uh, protection, it was presence, and praise. Mm -hmm. Those four things, and it culminated. And, and, and as a result of that, because they didn't receive those at, at, at that certain uh, periods of time in their life, they went out and sought. And as a, as a result of seeking those things, they were mm -hmm. willing, willing to give up certain vestures of their body mm -hmm. uh, as a result. Um, so I, I guess my point is, is that we, we, I think fathers have allowed the culture to uh, underestimate their importance. Um, the culture has somehow uh, just, just, just uh, um, 
deceived brothers and deceived men into believing that their that their say so or what they have to say is immaterial. But right. that's, that's 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 such a lie. Absolutely, far you know, out. Man, you know, man, Houston is the home of strip clubs, not unlike uh, yeah. other areas of the country. Yeah. But uh, I know of, of one. There's a story of one strip club owner that uh, they got out of the business, and he, he talked about how they groom and and, uh, mm. and recruit girls. And uh, so they'll go to high school proms. You know what the first question they ask the young lady? What's your relationship with your dad? dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if yeah. that opens the door, then they go on there. Yeah. So uh, the dads don't ever underestimate the, oh the power gosh. of the father. There's a reason he shares a moniker father with us mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but, but you're right. Culture is uh, you know, absolutely attacking uh, not only fathers, but God's design. Mm -hmm. Or relationship, mm -hmm. you know, his designs. You know, we, it, we're as men, we're called by uh, by Paul in Second Corinthians to demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ, and uh, we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. But mm -hmm. you know, so dads need to stand firm against the culture to demolish those arguments. But the tendency, the tendency indeed, is to to uh, to to uh, do that through mm -hmm. judgment and condescension. Mm -hmm. We're not really engaging right. in dialogue that right. may help someone mm -hmm. that's confused, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, I, I think, you know, um, sometimes when men don't know what to say, they won't say anything. Mm -hmm. um, but the mere presence of a guy, I'm telling you, I've, I've just seen this over and over again <laughs> in my life. The mere presence of men opening their mouths and saying a few things, they don't say a whole bunch, but just the bass in your voice and your presence changes the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I believe that we have a, the enemy of our soul has tried over time to have men believe that they're, they're, Im they're immaterial, that they're mm -hmm. not, you know, it doesn't matter. When, when like, a, like you were talking about, it's completely the opposite, man. We, when we show up in droves, things happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's just helping men recognize uh, the, 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 uh, the authority that they have and the magnitude of how they can change an atmosphere when they show up. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. just think, just think, okay, you know, what, we got 80% of the of, of football uh, uh, um, fans, men, right? So just think if men didn't show up at these games, what it would be like. You know, that's, that's my point, it changes the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And just think what would happen if droves of men show up to places that are contrary to our, our, our convictions. Mm. Man. Oh my gosh! Absolutely. Oh my gosh! The whole mm -hmm. atmosphere would change. Mm. Uh, has, has there been a situation where you've run into uh, someone that that has completely different perspective on healthy relationship than yourself? How how do you how would you encourage a man to whether it's uh, living uh, uh, out of wedlock, uh, mm -hmm. living together as a couple, or an alternative lifestyle? Mm -hmm. How how do you engage and and respect their perspective without embracing uh, the the situation? I think I think it's for me. I've I've learned that um, um, I res I respect you as a person. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I can't accept certain things. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that I don't love you or respect you or mm -hmm. have concern mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. um, when when I, I, I make them out to be uh, beneath me or I'm all right and you're wrong, then that immediately causes rebellion to take place. True. And so, but what I've learned is that when we take the love route, now hear my heart, I'm not saying that we, 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 uh, we, we condone. Right. Because I, I just can't do that, condone. Right. Right. What I'm saying is, is that I don't know that person's lifestyle. I, don't, I, mean, I mean, I don't know that person's upbringing. And uh, usually what happens is, is um, uh, and I used to do the same thing, I, I judge people by their actions and did not know their life. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just looking at their behavior and judging that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for example, when I was at the center, um, I didn't know what these young ladies had gone through. So the, the important thing for me was to love them. And when we loved them, then they, they began to make decisions that were uh, good decisions. Mm -hmm. They didn't go down the road of termination, not because I didn't tell them, but because I loved on them. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and because of that, and had, had a staff that loved mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. So my point is, I don't think that we should shy away right. Right. at all. I don't mm -hmm. think we should do that. But, right. I, I, but, but I do think that we should take into consideration someone's life mm -hmm. and what they've gone through, because we, we just don't know. 
we can do a lot more through a relationship than we can oh, conversation come on, man. or anything and that, else. That has know? changed yeah. everything. I mean, sure. I mean, it has just changed everything. Sure. So. And that, uh, like that's, a, that's a great point. And uh, like you say, it's like uh, Jesus and the adulteress, right? Well, come on, he said, man. hey, you know, I, I judge you neither, but go and sin no come more. Come on, girl. And now you know what's going on, then now right. we make some uh, headway. But, right. you know, the challenge this Father's Day month uh, is for dads to take a good look in the mirror, as, as I said, in our heritage and what have you, but uh, and lead family uh, discussions on God's design, because I think this a lot of times uh, is not happening. Mm -hmm. I think uh, George Barnard did a survey years ago that said even families in church, uh, mm -hmm. nine out of ten do not have any dis spiritual mm -hmm. discussions between Sundays. Mm -hmm. That's convicting. So our charge to dads this month is to, you know, talk mm -hmm. about God's design. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Genesis 127 so God created mankind in his own image the image of God he created them male and female he created them so there's two genders mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. he, the, the God's word will defend itself right yeah, and, and, and I think you know if, if I think I think that most of the time and again guys I, I could be out there but most of the time we think as men or as Christians or as believers that we have to have all the answers mm -hmm. and 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 we don't have to have all the answers all we do all we have to do is be in a position to be able to allow God to speak through us to, re to provide the help right. and provide mm -hmm. a, a, a perspective that perhaps they haven't thought about before. Because mm -hmm. what happens is we don't we, we see how the argument comes at us, mm -hmm. and we're thinking that in our own intelligence or in our own thick thought process that we can debate them out of what they're, you know, you you and I change mm -hmm. when we uh, by uh, when we followed God as a result of what, Him changing our hearts, mm -hmm. not our heads. Mm -hmm. Once He changed our hearts, and and when at least my experience, when, when individuals see the Lord, when they mm -hmm. really see Him, mm -hmm. when they really hear Him, mm -hmm. um, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. It just does. And so I just believe that men um, uh, really need to be in a position to allow God to live and love through them right. and have confidence in that. Right. Right. Um, and again, don't back down at all. Yeah, but um, I think, and maybe I'm just like I said, I'm, I'm just well, weird. You're, no, you're absolutely. Uh, this is what I experienced. My daughter is uh, in a musical theater, so there are a lot of alternative lifestyles, and I never argued against that. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I tried to build relationships with those young men and what have you in, in the theater. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I would always go to the Word of God. Yeah. There are two genders uh, that uh, you know half the second half of the first chapter of Romans mm -hmm. explains a lot of that as mm -hmm. well. So and as an adult now, she says, you know, I always respect that you didn't give me your opinion. Yeah. You gave me the, the, the word of it's God. It's off of you. And then it's all, that's right. It's, it's all part of you. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and then Genesis 2.24, it says, that's why a man leaves his father and mother and they unites with his wife. They become one flesh. So man and woman are defined as marriage. That's yeah. that's the that's the bottom line yeah. for, and the reason we are, Malachi 2.15 says, uh, has not God made you that you are one? Why one? So that you will raise a godly generation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that whole design that, educates our children from the get-go of what a healthy relationship between a man and woman, how they handle the problems, how mm -hmm. they handle the home, and that's what we instill in our kids as a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. isn't any, uh, it isn't any, uh, 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 you don't have to have a, a broad scope to see how the devil's attacked mm -hmm. marriage for a very specific reason, yeah. to destroy yeah. what healthy relationship looks like. Right. So. Uh, was a standard conveyed in family during your formative years? Your mother and father, they have a solid marriage. How, how was their relationship yeah, during your you formative know, if years? If I can remember, that, I think they were married for 29 years. And my, my dad died when he was young. I'm talking like 46, mm. 47, mm. something yeah, like I'm that. Sorry. But, you know, what's interesting, thank you. But what was interesting is that, yeah, they did instill those. You know, but they, but they, uh, but they, they spoke from a standpoint of, gosh, Rick, how do I put this? Uh, from a standpoint of gratitude. Mm. Not from a standpoint of like, you know, um, you know, you should not. You know, you ought to be grateful that you can. Mm -hmm. You ought to be grateful that you're, you have the ability to. Mm. Um, um, so yeah, they, they really instilled those, particularly my mother. My mother really showed us um, that, we, that we, you can really have an intimate relationship with the living God. You mm. really can. He's not just this, you know, distant uh, being in the sky, but he's personal and close. And so no matter what the circumstances are in your life, you, you, can, you can acknowledge him. And as a result of that, he'll direct your path. So hmm. yeah, I, I think for me, yeah, from a, from a, um, from a moral standpoint, yeah, I was, I was raised. 
Well, there are a lot of distractions out there for young men today. I mean, these phones, you know, we grow up as a magazine. These days it's the phones, pornography, or what have you. It's, like it's, it's, yeah. it, it'll, it, you don't have to click hardly. It just no. kind of jumps at you. You're right. You're right. It's, it, what used to be a soft porn is now a, a, a lingerie ad, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, what, what, what tips do you have for young men that are, are facing some of this stuff that uh, as, as, as they want to be the father they want to be, but they just can't get away from mm-hmm. that phone, can't get away from those images, what have you? How would you encourage a young man you know I, I um matter of fact I've, I've have, have a couple guys that you know we, we we talk about these things and you know some of them are having you know issues along those lines I, I guess for me it's and I know it's it's again my I'm just awfully yeah. simple um, I ask the men um, that are caught up in this and, and I know there's physiological changes that take place in the brain I understand that when it comes to porn but I ask them one question what is it that you really want no, really, what is it that you really want? I mean, do, uh, I mean, what do you want? And then have them ask, a- ask that question. And then now, does your behavior, is it, is it helping you fulfill what you want or is it helping you go away from what you want? Mm-hmm. As now the decision is on them. Mm-hmm. Now I'm there for you. I got your back. Mm-hmm. But I can't be there 24-7. But the question is, are you, um, is your actions, is, is watching porn or watching doing things going against what you really want or is it, and, and 10 times out of 10, no, it's totally destroying me. Okay, then, okay, brother, what do we need to do? What do we need to help you with this? Now, we're going to love on you. We're going to be there for you. But at the same time, what is it that we need to do to help you fulfill what you said you wanted? Hmm. So instead of, like, trying to coddle, we just, okay, let, let's, ha- let's come alongside you. You know, and many guys have given me their passwords. Hmm. They have, like, I really don't, I hate this thing, man. It's just got a grip on me. So we, you know. We give them resources and we help them, but, but at the same time, uh, you know, I guess, bro, I, for me, it's like, how can, when I say, how can I pray for you to a guy, I'm really asking him, what can I hold you accountable to? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then if he's just like kind of airy, then I know, okay, the relationship is going to be airy for a while. Mm-hmm. But if he goes, man, I'm having issues with porn, then I know I, and now he's asking me for mm-hmm. accountability. Mm-hmm. So for me, it, it, each one is case specific. Each one is different. So there's an, there's an adjustment in the in way in which I approach them, depending on their um, behavior patterns. And we take it from there. So I don't know if I answered the question, but no, that's for, for me, it, it, it's just, it's just uh, helping them recognize what they really want and mm-hmm. not satisfy for, for a for something that's less than what they want. That's a great tip, man. Mm-hmm. Well, Dad, you heard it from Otto there. I think that as we started out, look in the mirror. Uh, mm-hmm. Take on the responsibility to, to conduct or to participate in this Dad's Armor study by yeah, going man. to faithfulfathering.org and hit the For Dads button. And you can access a PDF, download the, you can watch the videos of the training. But uh, you want to look in the mirror and make sure that you are on track to do, uh, to get what you want, which is to be the dad you're called to be, the dad the next generation needs. But on that course, we have to rebuke uh, the goddess of Ishtar and Ashtoreth are alive and well in this Mm -hmm. world, and they will distract. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have the ability by the grace of God, by the resurrection power and ascension power of Jesus the Christ, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, to... uh, Uh, reject these arguments to demolish these arguments Mm. and take captive every thought to the obedience of jesus the christ Mm. so with that uh, that's the dad you're called to be that's the dad the next generation we need you brother we need you sorry thank (laughs) you you. Uh, we need you man you're right Otto. thanks (laughs) thanks Otto, for being here thanks brother god bless godspeed